In this lesson, we'll be looking at source control in VS Code. So if you're using VS Code as your code editor, VS Code has an inbuilt source control management feature, which is this by the right here, source control. So far in this course, we have been using commands from the terminal. We have seen git status, we have seen git log, git add, git commit, and you can do all these things from the terminal, but VS Code also provides a much more user-friendly way to do these things, which is in source control here. For example, if I should make a change to this file index.html let's just say i add something here just as we understand so far if i should run git status we're going to see that this file has been modified you can see modified index.html let me change this file to script.js let's just say refactor code and now if i should come here i run git status i have two files which have been modified now let's say I add a new file and if you remember when you add a new file that file becomes an untracked file because git doesn't have any history of that file. So if I should say new file and let's just call this demo.ts and let's just say some demo stuff. Now if I should come here again and run git status you can see that I have one untracked file which is demo.ts. Now we can see the status of our project on the terminal, which is also fine. But if I come to source control, you can see that the source control already shows me three, like a notification, and it says three pending changes. Now if I should click on this, look at what we have here. You can see I have this demo.ts and this has this U here. And what that U means is on track. Just the way we have demo.ts under on track files here. We also have U here, which is on tracked. Then we have index.html and this has M and this is modified. How does it know it's modified? Well, as we understand so far, index.html is part of the Git history of this repository. So Git can tell that this file has been modified. Script.js, this also has been modified. Now let's say I come here and I delete a file. Let's just say I delete this style.css. Now if I come here and I run git status, you see we have one modified file, another modified file, one deleted file because this file was part of git history and one on track file. Now if you come here, you see we have four pending changes. Come here, you see this is on track U, this is M modified, this is M script JS, and this is deleted. And that's why we have the D. And if you click on this file, you see that it has demo.cs on track here. If you click at this file, you can see it shows us what we added. You can see this line is green to show us that this is the new line that we added. If you click on this file, you can see this line is great. If you click on this file, it tells you this file has been deleted. So this source control feature makes it kind of easy and like I said, a user-friendly way for you to manage your Git repository. Now, what if you wanted to add files to the staging area? As we understand so far, if I want to add one file to the staging area, I can do git add index.html and it will add that change to the staging area if I run git status. You see it has the staging area with this and these other ones are not in the staging area and these ones are on track. Now if we go to source control, you can see that it now has two sections. It has the first section staged changes. And what do we have in our staging area? We have index.html and then we have the other changes which are not in our staging area. And if I want to add another file to the staging area, instead of doing git add here, I can just come here and click plus. So let's say I want to add demo.cs to the staging area. I can click plus. Now it is in the staging area. I can also click plus for the style.css and now that change is in the staging area. Now what if I want to make a commit? I want to create a snapshot or a new version of my project. Well as we understand so far you can do git commit. Well if we run git status, these are the files in our staging area which will be included in our commit. And then I can run git commit hyphen m and then I can write my message. But instead of doing this, I can also come here and write my commit here. So I can say do some new stuff and then I can click on commit. And now those changes have been recorded as a new version. I also showed you that if you want to see all the commits in your repository, you can come to your file directory, go to git, and then you can go to logs and go to head. 
and it will show you all the commits that we have so far you can either do this or you can come here and run git log and when you run git log it's going to show you a scrollable list of all the commits that you have or if you want you can also do git log 2 minus 2 and this will show you the last two commits you can either do all of this or you can still go to source control and go to commits here so this section here is for source control but i can also view commits and in this commit you can see all the commits that we have so far add initial files the first commit we made this 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 and the one we just did now do some new stuff and if i also click on this commit i can actually see the files that changed in this commit so i can see that this file was added you see a added this file was modified you can see m modified this star was deleted you can see d deleted and there's a lot more you can do with the source control feature of vs code which we'll be looking at as we progress in this course but i do want to say that as we progress in this course we'll be looking more at terminal commands because regardless of the code editor that you're using you can always use these terminal commands and the reason why it's also important for you to learn terminal commands is that in some environments you may not have access to a source control environment like this a source control environment like we have in vs code it definitely makes life easier and faster which is great but i would definitely recommend that you familiarize yourself a lot with the terminal commands before you start using extensions like this and by the way if you are not on vs code if you're on some other code editor you can also check online there are a lot of git extensions for various code editors or maybe your editor already has a source control feature as vs code already has but like I said again, in this lesson, we'll be looking at a lot of terminal commands. We might use the source control feature in a few places, but I want you to familiarize yourself with using Git in the terminal. So if you're not using VS Code or you don't have this feature, don't worry, we'll still be doing a lot of things from the terminal.